In the early hours of June 28, 1969, a police raid on a gay bar in Greenwich Village, New York City, called the Stonewall Inn, caused the village youth to rise up against the police. Prior to Stonewall, many tragedies had befallen the LGBT community, and many were still to come. But coming out triumphantly from the riots caused a change in the community's attitude about their situations, jumpstarting the gay rights movement. The late 1900s were full of movements fighting for basic human rights, such as the civil rights movement, the feminist movement, and the counterculture of the 1960s, otherwise known as the anti-war movement. Also happening was the Vietnam War and the draft. Being openly LGBT previous to Stonewall meant ostracization from society, being disowned, and living in fear. Many LGBT people participated in the movements, especially lesbians in the feminist movement as well as men and women in the war, despite the fact that homosexuals weren't allowed in the military. However, the LGBT people contributing to the groups rarely were recognized for their work, with activists like Bayard Rustin and Polly Murray being left practically unacknowledged for their efforts throughout the civil rights movement, and gay and lesbian service members receiving a blue discharge if their sexual orientation had been discovered. LGBT people being overlooked for their contributions to large events in the time period resulted in further oppression. In addition to the exclusion the LGBT people faced in movements, homosexuality was on the American Psychological Association's list of mental illnesses, and homosexual acts were illegal in every state except for Illinois at the time. In 1953, President Eisenhower signed Executive Order 10450, another major blow to the LGBT community. The executive order said that openly gay people couldn't be employed by the U.S. government. This led to a mass firing of LGBT people. This was obviously a tremendous setback for a large number of LGBT people, yet somehow they still prevailed. Every major city in America had a gay scene, places that LGBT people could gather and be understood by people like them. They hung out in gay bars, bathhouses, and designated parks where they may find a lover for the night. One famous gay scene was Greenwich Village in New York City, well known for the so-called village youth or village queens that inhabited the area. The Stonewall Inn was a sleazy, mafia-run gay bar on Christopher Street in the village, popular because the darkness and seclusion of the bar meant people could dance with and meet the same sex without fear. However, not even these relatively safe spaces were impervious to homophobia, with police raids being commonplace, particularly during elections, to try to show people that the police were getting stuff done and purging the undesirables, per se. This specific raid was on the 28th of June, 1969, when police raided the bar for selling liquor without a license. While raids weren't unusual, this night was not at all unexceptional because the patrons had had enough. Instead of dispersing as they normally did, the crowd stuck around, jeering at the police and growing unruly. Suddenly, they sparked into a riot, lasting five days on and off, and resulting in a major victory for the LGBT community. While the rioters themselves thought little of the riot, it gained national attention, grazing numbers of front pages. Many young LGBT people supported the riots, appreciating this idea of gay power, but not all opposition came from the outside. A lot of older LGBT people, such as the Madachin Society, did not approve, as they vied for assimilation rather than essentially a separate lifestyle. 
The riots may have been over, but the fight for LGBT rights certainly wasn't. The Gay Liberation Front was created on October 13th the same year, primarily fueled by the energy of the riots. The national press of the Stonewall riots created a platform for LGBT individuals and activists to get their point across. The riots were also able to bring attention to police brutality, particularly toward LGBT people. On the one-year anniversary of the Stonewall riots, a parade was organized known as the Christopher Street Parade, which celebrated gay pride and would pave the way for all future pride parades. The essence of Stonewall changed the tactics that LGBT activists used to include public demonstrations, which resulted in an increase in the public's acceptance and perception of LGBT people becoming increasingly positive. In much the same way that Stonewall had been a call for acceptance, major pressure from LGBT activists pressed the APA to remove homosexuality from its list of mental illnesses in 1973. In 1980, the Democratic Party became the first major political party to endorse an LGBT rights platform. The 1990s brought another change to the LGBT movement with a shift in goals. Instead of vying for sexual liberation, the movement became more about being accepted for who they are. The anniversary parades commemorating Stonewall have become an annual occurrence in June, also known as Pride Month. The LGBT community has come a long way since Stonewall. Gay marriage was legalized in the U.S. on June 26, 2015, three days before the 46-year anniversary of the riots. As time goes on, LGBT people are becoming more and more accepted by straight society, and that can only be attributed to the gay rights movement. Had the Stonewall riots never occurred, who knows if the gay rights movement would have seen the same successes it did. This June will mark 50 years since the Stonewall riots, and it is truly incredible to see how far the LGBT community has come.